is a presentation of Real Wise Productions and Comi Media Incorporated. Another gun? Another gun? Goodness gracious. Next on Mentality. I'm sorry, my bad. Welcome to another edition of Mentality, the place where iron sharpens iron in the areas of health, mental health, wealth, entrepreneurship, love, and brotherhood from a man's perspective. I am one of the co-hosts of this program, Cole Johnson, and I am joined as always by the other co-host of this show, the one who goes by one Mr. YSLFA, a.k.a. F. Boston. How you doing, sir? I am doing well, brother. How's everything going on with you? Oh, man. Everything is great, man. Everything is lovely. Well, Scott Bayo is ditching the sunshine, uh, ditching the Golden State. And he's going to the Sunshine State. So Scott Bayo was a longtime California resident, I believe 45 years, he said. And uh, the Happy Days and Charles in Charge star announced on Twitter about a couple weeks back that he was moving out of California due to what he described as the state's homelessness issue. Now, he confirmed that his family his family's moved to Florida with Jesse Waters. And if you're unfamiliar with him, he is one of the anchors on Fox News. And so he said that the, his mood has divided social media as fans chimed in with words of support and critics skew with the actor's departure. Some some applauding the move and the reasons to why. Others are saying, thank God, California, we hate it for you in Florida. Now, my question to you, sir, is how will this stunt and yes, I will actually call it a stunt, change the fortunes of the epidemic homelessness issue that does play California. Not a d nothing, nothing. What has Charles in Charge done? What has Charles in Charge done to help the situation? What is he doing to help the situation? Huh? What, what, Charles, Charles, what are your recommendations to help with the homelessness? Like, you think you moving out of the state is going to really make a difference? Like they're gonna be more happy. Listen, oh, and welcome to Florida. You and DeSantis will enjoy each other very much. So, very much so, because because <laughs> this this dude is, oh my god. So so, you're gonna leave the craziness that is California, because mm -hmm. yes, I I get it. California is crazy right now. It is to go to the <laughs> show that is Florida. <laughs> Oh, no. Because that's what's going on in Florida. Some real <laughs> show. <laughs> DeSantis is losing his <laughs> mind. <laughs> you know, you know, I, like, I saw this video. I don't know if it's true or not. And if mm -hmm. it's true, and if it's true, mm -hmm. there will be another, well, because Boston is just a city that I say, but Florida will be the state. Oh no! Oh 
no. Cause, cause... <laughs> so I, I don't know if this is true or not. I don't know. My <laughs> wife, it was on TikTok. I don't know. I, you know how there's mis- misinformation over there. Right. But but she showed me a video where mm-hmm. this cop stopped someone and they mm-hmm. were leaving Florida. Mm-hmm. The cop stopped them and asked them if they were a U.S. citizen. Like, like, not like it blew my mind. I didn't know if it was true or not. But what f- business is of yours? If I'm a U.S., you what are you pulling me over for? Because now, now, now you're giving, now, now, now you're giving them excuses to stop. Like, there's a lot of us brown people that are U.S. citizens that we're not immigrants. We we was born here. And now what? We're gonna get stopped and harassed because you want to know if we're a U.S. citizen? Like this is this is getting ridiculous. You can't say gay. What what's going on, Florida? <laughs> All those people that moved to Florida right during the pandemic because Florida was free. Because mm-hmm. right. you could do whatever you want in Florida. You could spread COVID like mm-hmm. it was like it was the common cold. <laughs> They didn't care. They had their spring break. It didn't matter to them. They're like, oh, yeah, we're going to. And when numbers was piling up, when numbers was piling up, my man tried to fudge the numbers and fired the person who blew, who put it out there. (laughs) And and, and, and I'm not lying. It's it's, it's news. It's the facts. They fired the young lady who was. Reporting the factual numbers, mm-hmm. and they wanted to hide certain numbers. They didn't want the certain numbers to be shown, and she got arrested. They, all this, all this, not because we have a dude in Florida. Not, not orange one. Not the orange one. They, they, these are the two of them are actually at, at odds. Right? <laughs> <They're> <laughs> You, you got these these this, not this, the this one. not the orange one no you got th- these two idiots you got this idiot here trying to <laughs> to to appease uh, a side of his of his party trying mm-hmm. to show that show them and when I say them I mean the orange people that. <laughs> That hey, I can also be a real d- and scumbag, so come vote for me. Why the orange people? <laughs> like the Oompa Loompas. <laughs> you said it, not me. You said it, not me. Yes, yes, they're like the Oompa Loompas. They are like the Oompa Loompas. Because have you really seen? Have you seen them really get in? A, have you have you seen them interview an orange person? Some of these orange people are real pieces of wood. Not f- bright. Yo, they're not real. They're not bright. They're not, they are not bright. He, was, he, knew who, he knew who he was attracting. He knew when he when he ran for office, he knew what people would follow. He knew the he knew the real dumb people would follow him. The ones that the ones you say, hey yeah. You you say the right words. Kind of like our boy who practiced in the mirror. Like you say certain things. Say like, yeah, we're gonna build a wall. And you got these uh, like, oh, you're gonna build a wall? Yeah. So, yeah. Oh my yes, it's, it's gonna be exciting to see. It's gonna be exciting oh to gosh. see. The Santas think he's gonna win the presidency. It's not gonna happen. Not now, especially now, because. You want to go against, you want to go against the mouse. Uh, many of people have disappeared because of the mouse. Oh, don't be fooled. Uh, you, uh, and so you're talking about the lawsuit that Disney has uh, has filed against him, or at least his his administration. No, but no, back to going back to Scott Bell. Let me go back to Scott Bell. <laughs> 
Yo, what what have you done for me lately? Like what, <laughs> what have <laughs> I seen genocide. you? What have I seen you in recently? What what rev, what what are you relevant? Now you I don't even see replays of any of your old shows. Like uh, you are not low oh, wow. Scott Bear moved out of California. Whippy f- do. <laughs> Oh, 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 stop, stop, but nobody f- cares that you moved out of California. Seriously, dude, that's it. Like, who? That's, that's why we, he, he did it on Twitter. He announced it on Twitter like it was some big. <laughs> nobody give a f- nobody cares, oh, Scott Bell. Lord. No one cares, <laughs> Scott Bell. Please enjoy yourself in Florida. Florida is oh, a sh- show God. anyway. <sighs> it's, it's, it's humid, it's hot. Yeah, it, it, it is. It's nothing special. It's nothing special. They got some nice beaches. That's it. You got Cubans there. It's nothing. It's like out of all this, like all those like Caribbean islands and and all that. My, my Cuban brothers, they're some little cocky. <laughs> so I, I really don't like them. <laughs> They, they they think they're the, the better. They think they're the better of the Caribbean islands. Like no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some poor pieces of shit that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? My apologies. I should have offended a whole country like Cuba. My apologies. But um, oh lord, yeah. Some of them got some. Like I, I like some of them think they they this like please you you swam over in a banana boat like. Stop uh. it. Like these new, like they had this new Republican, <laughs> these Cubans that are new Republicans down there, and and oh yeah, like like y'all do, you know what it is? They think they they're white. That's what it is. <laughs> it is it is what it is. It is that's what they think. Oh, I probably don't no. get in trouble for this, shit, but I don't give a. <laughs> like seriously, when was the when was when was the last thing I've seen Charles in charge of Jack? <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I haven't seen him in charge of. Sh- We're just getting started. Mentality will return. What do you get when you watch or listen to the Life Happens podcast? Well, I'll let them tell you. Kim and I are both ministers of the gospel and the Life Happens podcast is a beautiful balance by simply taking our spirituality with real life and merging it together to create a beautiful balance. And that's what we do. BS3 Network proudly presents Life Happens podcast, where Christianity and life intersect live every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central. There's a 100% chance of a laugh thunderstorm. Four men with different viewpoints take a movie, show, or documentary and review it uncensored unfiltered uncompromised with no holds barred join bs3 wilkes king dog and h rap b as they take on hollywood their own way bs3 network proudly presents the forecast where h rap b always predicts if i owe you something i ain't got it and if you need it get it from god Live every Monday at 8.30 p.m. Central. Check your local listings for your viewing and listening pleasure. Welcome back to Mentality, where Bizarro Wise rules it all. With Wise El Jefe, I'm Cole Johnson, and... You know, I, I wanted to touch on something that was actually positive, and I think it's time I do that. And 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 for 
those who might not know what I'm about to talk about, well, I'll lay it out for you in enough respect. All right, so let's set the stage and scene for you. January 2nd, Monday Night Football, Bills versus Bengals in Cincinnati. Well, at the end of the first quarter or toward the end of the first quarter, uh, T. Higgins, wide receiver for the Bengals, took a reception, and cornerback uh, DeMar Hamlin was waiting to tackle him and did, got back up, and then unfortunately collapsed if you want to hear certain reports, fatally on the field. Well, thankfully, he's been revived and he now is alive and he's well. And he's now been cleared to actually play football again. Well, he was joined with T. Higgins and other Bengals players on an off-road adventure. Actually, this made me happy to see and hear all of that. So for you, I'll ask this. What should this off-the-field reunion between Hamlin, Higgins, Boyd, and Chase signify? Uh, That they know that life is precious, that they they only live one life, and listen, we're going to live it the fullest that we we can. And and, and I I commend them. Like, listen, you've seen firsthand what, how life is precious, how in an instant your life can change. Mm -hmm. So... You need to embrace that. You need to look at that and be like, hey, listen, like, I'm, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. So I'm going to enjoy today every day. I'm going to be myself every day. I'm going to grow and learn and, and, and develop every day. And, and it's, it's like, you should look at it as every day is your birthday. Yeah. Every day that you wake up, you should look at it as your birthday because mm. you, you don't know. You don't know. So you, the fact that you're getting up to experience another day of life, enjoy it like your birthday. Enjoy every day like your birthday. Do what you want to do as long as you're not hurting anyone. Live your life the way you want to live it. Hmm. Yeah. Shout out to 50 Cent, who's uh, in the club uh, song. It will celebrate his 20th anniversary this year. Yes. <laughs> um. So we, we've talked about Hamlin, about this, uh, um, you know, the, the situation, obviously, because he was the epicenter of the. Yeah. He was he was the episode. He was a couple of he, he was he was a couple of our episodes. We, we touched on it, touched on it. And yeah. we've we felt he like he's been cleared to come back and play. Right. And a lot of people think that's the wrong decision. And. I think it's it's it's. I think it's the wrong and right decision. I think it's the wrong decision because I feel taking a risk is 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 really dangerous. But if you've been cleared and it's something that you want to continue to do, who am I to tell you not to live your life? Who am I to say no? That's wrong. You shouldn't go after your dream, your vision, what you want to do all your life. Some some of these dudes have been wanting to play football since they were in Pee Wee League. This right. is all they want. This is all they've wanted to do was play this sport. Mm-hmm. And for us to tell someone, no, you can no longer, no longer live your dream, it's not our decision. Right. So if the doctors have cleared him and they don't feel it's a danger to him, and if he wants to continue with his journey, God bless him. Can do, yeah. do you, brother? Do you? Yeah. I don't agree with it, but again, I live my life the way I want to live. So I don't right. let nobody tell me how to f-ing live my life. So who yeah. am I to tell him how to live his? Yeah. Go after it, brother. Yeah. I, I'll keep you in my prayers. Hopefully, you have a long, successful career, mm-hmm. and, and nothing else happens. This is just this would just be that one in a million things to happen like this is something that in all the years we've watched football this is the only time i've seen it happen yeah 
And you would have thought in a sport that's so violent, it, it might have happened before. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's, it hasn't. It, yeah, so it, so like I said, I mean, he's, he's in my prayers. I, I wouldn't do it, but I'm, that's not me. That's not my life. Maybe right. if I was in the league and, and experienced the, the joy of playing a sport of football for a living, mm -hmm. maybe if I, if it happened to me, I would, I would if I need something I'm clear to go, I'm, I would probably go back too. Especially me knowing the mindset that I have that you only live once and you, you go out and do what you love to do. So we've talked about Hamlin. And I don't mean just us. I mean society has talked about him. Yeah. Um, interesting in how people have not talked about in this situation in that in that scenario where you had the collision was T. Higgins, and you heard a little bit of sort of derision in his direction of you know why did you hurt him? But after. After things seemed to stabilize with Hamlin's condition being better and improving, it seemed as though people stopped talking about him. So why didn't anybody talk about T. Higgins about the few days after and until even now when Hamlin suffered cardiac arrest? It, it, it's, it's, it's crazy because he, he's, he's been through some stuff too. Like, right. Your part, he he he's like he says. What, did I do anything wrong on the, on right. my end? Um, did I hit? Did I hit any? Did I hit him the wrong way or did right. it, whatever it was? Mm -hmm. And and nobody was there to, to be like, oh man, what's what's going through T's head? What what right? Was he going through? Because mm -hmm. we everybody immediately Hamlin, 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 and yeah. the guy, listen, rightly so, because the man <laughs> almost lost his life. Yeah, 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 but. It's, it's, but people went and attacked him like right. he had control of what happened. Like he's right. like, I'm gonna really go hurt my brother, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's something that's not like football players are very protective of each other. Yeah, it's, they it's, know it's, 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 yeah, it's a it's brotherhood. A it's, it's, it's a brotherhood, brotherhood. and there's mm -hmm. no and if, and if you're there to maliciously hurt one of your brothers, then you shouldn't play this. You shouldn't sport. even be on the court. You shouldn't be on the field, right? So yeah. they know. That, between those lines, they need to protect each other. They know what's right. like. It's this rough. It's a rough, violent sport. We know this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if we don't, if they, if we don't protect each other, then we have chaos there. Mm -hmm. And so, it, it's it's I, I I could imagine what he's been through, what's been doing, what's been pain in his head. Like, oh my gosh, if I hit someone else, am I gonna? Am I gonna mm -hmm. get hurt or someone else? So you, yeah, Demar went through a lot, but mm -hmm. he also went through a lot. Like he, yeah. you don't know what's going on in his head. He, he yeah. you don't know if he feels guilty for what happened, mm -hmm. or or whatever it is. So yeah, like I could imagine, I could imagine what's mm -hmm. what's going on in his head. Like being a part of one of the most scariest moments, no, the scariest moments the. in NFL football. The yeah, where you're on live national TV and you see this man fight for his life and you played a part in it. Not intentionally. No, yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it inadvertently. Happened. Yeah, mm -hmm. it it it, ha it just happened. This is not it's not like he was like I'm, he was like, I'm gonna hurt. No. It, it just happened. Yeah, I'm gonna hurt, I'm gonna kill him. No, no, no. that was that wasn't that wasn't in wasn't him. The intent. Yeah, that wasn't the intent. That wasn't the intent at all. Mm -mm. Yeah. For those who really really want to know how how t hickens was throughout the whole process his mindset was i want to make sure that the hamlin family knows his mother was in tennis at the game and starting there he wanted to make sure that they knew it was like no hard feelings i want to make sure that damar is good because yeah. this is troublesome to me and the family the family Immediately, it wasn't even a thought to them. The family said to T, "Look, baby, not your fault at all. This happens, so don't beat yourself up. All you need to do is just be proud of the way you play and keep playing the way you've been playing. In fact, that play that you did, that play that happened, that 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 hurt, that hurt our Demar. That's exactly what you're supposed to do as a football player. Keep playing like that." 
You didn't do anything wrong. I love the fact the family rushed to embrace T as if they as if he was a member of their family. Because they know, they know, like they know it wasn't intentional. They know, yeah, it happened. They like, and he he's part. He's a part of the equation. Mm-hmm. He's a part of the impact. Yeah. So f- for you not to worry about his mental state, especially now, mm-hmm. with with life and, and we're really focusing on mental st- health and and focusing on on people's mental right. mental. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that that's that's a that's a major blow. That's that's something yeah. like like has you rattled. Even though you weren't the one in the mm-hmm. hospital, you still you was a part of it. Like yeah. You're part of history, yeah, and and not yeah. in a good way. No. no. So just thank God that he's alive, because who knows what how he would have been had he passed. Oh my gosh, man! I would not. Whoa! You are a sports fan like I am. You're definitely a football fan like I am, mm-hmm. and you know the and you know the. Heck, I'll call it this way. The cancerous culture of fandom, uh, whenever you see players of differing teams fraternizing. So uh, should this be cause for alarm, considering that Hamlin plays for the Bills and you have Higgins, Boyd, and Jamar Chase playing for the Bengals? Listen, with the way players switch teams now it's not like how back in the day a player True. paid five ten fifteen years with the same franchise they're like hopping all over all all mm-hmm. over now like they can't they don't rarely do you see someone finish their career with one team to see them build a relationship and, and build that brotherhood it, it's good to see and, yeah. and, and 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 you as a fan if you don't like it you too like what else can i say like like just get over it like it's life yeah. get over it like it's a, it's a game i know in games we have enemies or opponents but except for except in- for if, if you're a red sox fan, if you're a red sox like there's no, there's no help for you there's no help for you you just you just you just suck all over the world <laughs> just, just, just Boston, the city itself, just the whole stuff. Boston. Like, <laughs> seriously, like, it's just that city. It's just yeah. that city. And there's nothing I- good about Boston. Nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. Not the Red Sox, not the Bruins, definitely not the Celtics. Um, (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Mentality will be back in two and two. What's on E. Dicka's mind? A and B. I'm going to see my way out of it because why i don't care i have a message for people who do nothing but complain about black people we can't change who we are you call the cops on me i think that every time you call the cop on someone on a false accusation Yo, need to be a little bit punished. BS3 Network proudly presents a man with a lot to say and is unabashed to say it. What's on E Digger's mind? Sundays at 7 30 p.m. Central. Check your local listings for your viewing and listening pleasure. This is a BS3 Network presentation. This your girl, Stacey Rose. Are you looking for a show with riveting interviews, important community information from a vibrant and grounded host? 
STK Productions presents the intro kit. Put God first and ask questions later. Let's get it popping. I wanted to give people a platform where they can express themselves and talk about their business and their endeavors in a very safe space. Content and entertainment just for you. The intro kit. Friday Eve. Or Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 p.m. Central. Welcome back to Mentality, where this is the place created for all men. With Wise Head Lefe, I'm Cole Johnson. And this story is one I did not want to even talk about at all. And I will talk about this on Cole Sports from a sports angle later. But from a man's angle, I'm going to talk about this as we bring one John Morant under the learning tree. Now, we all know that he went under a, a rehabilitation, I guess you could say, stint for brandishing a weapon on an Instagram live back in the winter. Well, here we are, middle of May, and the Saturday before uh, Mother's Day, there was yet another Instagram live, this one not coming from his page, but coming from one of his boys' pages. And that Instagram live featuring featured him holding a gun in his hand. Now, I'll say this. I'll say allegedly he was holding a gun in his hand. But we do know that his boy was doing this and signaling a gun with his hand. <sighs> NBA spokesperson Mike Bass said that the league was aware of the social media posts and was in the process of gathering more information as they had begun an investigation. The team that Morant plays for, the Memphis Grizzlies, has suspended them from all team activities, and it's indefinite. More than likely, it might be at least the start of next year, and it might extend further into the 2024 season. These questions I'm going to ask are very painful for me to even utter. What did this young man learn in his rehab stint earlier this year? Why the f are we bringing this moron back under the f learning tree? Because obviously he didn't f learn another f thing. Seriously, did you not get a suspect? Did you not almost lose your career over some dumb? Oh, sure. And again, I am a registered gun owner, so I'm not here to say he shouldn't have a gun. I'm saying stop playing with it on video. Please. Stop. Please. Like, what are you what are you trying to show? What are you trying to show? What? What? What is it that you are trying? What is it that you're trying to imply? You're not gangster, my man. Never you're not been. hood. You're Never not hood. Been. You you think it's sweet. You, look at all these rappers that have been bodied, especially in men like coming playing in Memphis, <sighs> and with a lot of the stuff that's happened in Memphis, especially with with the rappers. Mm hmm. Oh yeah. Not to mention you're still licking your wounds from Tyree Nichols in January. Why, my man? Why? You have 193 million reasons why you shouldn't be playing with that gun on video. And then, if, okay, if, if you want to show you, why don't you show yourself in, or if you want to show yourself shooting a gun, why don't you show yourself in the in in a gun range with professionals yeah. showing you how to shoot a gun? If you're gonna do something, if you're gonna do something, be do something responsible. 
Yeah, show that you know how to be a responsible gun owner. Show, show right. that you're going to be, you're at the range with a license, with an expert, showing you like safety, gun safety. Do that. Do yeah. a PSA on, 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 gun on, on gun safety. How about that, buddy? Not acting a fool, waving a gun. You might shoot your you might shoot yourself in the in the leg like Cheddar Bob. Who fuck like seriously? Or like Plastic Burris. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I just I don't understand this. Why are you using a gun as a prop like it? Like someone back in the set of Russ did that almost landed Alec Baldwin in jail, and that was a prop gun. I, 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 do, I don't and you will have to help me out on this man look I, I don't own a weapon I don't own I don't own a weapon not saying that I won't I most likely will because I know how to use one I know how to operate one I've been You're trained to operate been one. trained to use one yes yeah yes, I've sir. been trained to use yes. one yeah so it's it's not that I'm scared of it it's just I just haven't gone around to getting one yeah but so you know I am on the side of gun owners. Yeah. If you have one, please have one, and please know the power that ho- that you hold. Yes. When you it wield is. one. When I was younger, I did not want to own a gun because I knew my mind state. I knew mm-hmm. I was young, hot headed, and right. stupid. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until I was in my forties that I decided, okay, yeah, I, I know that I'm not going to kill anyone because yeah. I'm not not in that mind state. I'm right. But this is more for you coming to my house. Yeah, protection. And, yeah, and you 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 endanger my family. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna light your ass up. Yeah, there's there's no no question about that. But yeah. for me, if you think if I'm gonna be riding around with my pistol, waving it around, it, nah, man, it's, no, no, I'm not. It's, I don't. It's not. It's not the reason for it. The reason for it again is to protect my family. You come into my home, you never know life. Like I got it because of the. After the pandemic, all this craziness, all these people. Like, no, you come to my house, you're going to feel some hot ones. That, that's it. That, <laughs> my that's, man. My man. That makes that makes me happy to see, to hear you say that. And, and, that, and that is why one of my favorite hip-hop songs of all time is, has been, as, as soon as it came out, and always will be, Cypress Hill's How I Could Just Kill a Man. Because that, to me, is the ultimate self gui- self-defense guide to life. Because <laughs> I'm like, there we go. A song that talks about a responsible gun owner and just basically scares somebody to say, if you come on board my property illegally or in the way that we did not invite you, you might have to deal with some hot lead. And I won't have any problems dumping them into it. No, no, none whatsoever. I won't feel bad about it. I really won't. Because, again... When in that situation like that now it, it goes it goes to fight or fight. I'm gonna protect yeah. myself. I'm gonna protect. You got to. Ones. I'm gonna protect those that I love. So, but in a situation like this, where this f-ing clown is f-ing trying to, what that is it trying case. to? No, no, it's not. It's not the case. He's a f-ing clown. Like you have yeah. all this talent in the f-ing world, but yet you want to be a gangster. Mm-hmm. You're not living a gangster life, my G. It's never had gangster about what you. It's no, no thing. He never had. He's never lived it. Never. This is this is what this is why I have the issue. He never lived that style. He his upbringing. He never came from the streets, bro. I, bro, I know stone cold killers, man. I have I too. Know, I personally, I know stone cold killers. <sighs> he ain't it. He's not, not even close. He is not. <laughs> not even close. He is not because my, my, my the killers I know wasn't they wasn't flashing. They was hitting you when you didn't no. expect it. That's right. They they wasn't That's letting right. anybody know that what they're carrying heat. They was gonna yeah. let they silent but deadly. Let, yep. It was gonna let you know once they caught you. Once they caught you. Yep. Yep. And so being gangster ain't about being. Like, listen, I, I I know some stone cold killer, dude. You're not mm-hmm. it. Stop yeah. trying to bleed about that life. It, it's nothing. Listen, all this is all this is going to cause you is grief at the end of the day. 
I hope it doesn't, man, because because someone's going to want to test you. We, we've touched on someone this will last try time. to test this game. Ooh. Yeah, we we touched on this last time when we brought him, we brought him under the learning tree. Dude, someone, someone's going to want to test you. Are you gangster. All right, let's see. Let's see how gangster you are. Someone will test this gangster, and I don't want that to happen. How, how, how gangster is Young Dolph? No longer he's here with us. Yeah, God about to say he's not even on. Yeah, he's not no longer on the earth. Happened in that city. This is what I don't understand. That's, that's Memphis, crazy, not... <laughs> Memphis, Memphis is heavy in the gang culture. Right. You don't want to be about that life. From the throne. This is mentality. This is all docked up. Chris. Listen, I gotta go to work, Jay. I cannot take a shot every time we say enemies. Very oh. jealous. I'm not gonna lie, you guys. So he flies her out. She says, Thank you. That was very kind of you. Like Pernilla's not starstruck. She was like, Yeah, you ought to if you want me to come. I wasn't gonna put the bill. He literally threatened her. His message says, I see you blocking me on WhatsApp. I don't know why, but this is not going to turn out good for you. Because I blocked you on WhatsApp? You threatened me and my mama? Are you looking for something to do on your lunch break? Well, there's a show on the BS3 Network that has only four words to say to you. We ready. We ready. We ready for y'all. With AJ, powered by JM and E. Live weekdays at noon central. And, and, and you would know, you know, being that being from around that you live in that state. Yep, I'm living in the state now. Yeah, you you know what you you seen firsthand what goes on. Mm-hmm. This is not this is not the life you want to live, bro. No, it's not. You're gonna no. run into some real ones. There's some <laughs> real ones out there that yeah. don't play, and they don't they, care. Yeah, they're not gonna they're not gonna oh. care. Oh, oh, care. So, oh. Oh, so oh, you got an NBA contract? Oh, oh, see so you on TV? Oh, all right. They, they, they'll just regard you as a body. Mm-hmm. And, and and I don't want that for him. I don't want that for him. But he we, is going we, down that road, man. And 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 that's what's the problem is is you see you one time you let it happen the first time it happened again. It's like all right. If you see what the first time will happen. Mm-hmm. And you nearly your career, you almost shot down your career. No pun intended. And hmm. and, and now look at you again with the same stupid <laughs> like you you're a moron. You're a <laughs> moron. Like I don't understand. He was gonna go there. But I don't understand this. I don't. Like you got all this you got all these this ability, all this these skills, like, man, why are you wasting your talents trying to be a gangster? Why? 
I, I don't I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't either. I, I I wish I could understand what you was thinking, but I don't. I I, I don't either, man. I, the, I, I don't understand f-ing morons sometimes. So <laughs> I, I I just. <sighs> When I saw this, I all I could all I could say was this dude is not learning his lesson. He's not understanding how important he is to the family that is the International Basketball Association. He most certainly doesn't realize how closely he's being watched. I thought he understood that lesson with his first uh incident, first yeah. I- incident yeah. where he was like, "Okay, and the NBA people are watching me closely. I'm going to have to button my stuff up. No, you're still doing the same crap now. Listen, the NBA <laughs> has professional investigators. 24-7. Professional investigators, they hear any little thing like, oh, okay. And they find ev- they, they find evidence. Mm-hmm. They find evidence because, again... I mean, this is what? this is a multi billion <laughs> billion dollar industry uh, yeah. and and if you think that because you can dribble a ball and you can put it in the hole that you're going to jeopardize all of this <laughs> No sir no just ask Gilbert Arenas and I've been I, saying I, I, yeah. Thank you for mentioning his name. I've been saying this to people. I've been saying this to people. I've been saying uh, because uh, the question I was going to ask was why did why why are there people who seemingly have a problem with Moran being punished with this? Because obviously people forget what happened almost twenty years ago with, with, with Gibbard Arenas, and then in the next collective bargaining agreement, it was slid in there. Where David Stern was like, okay, I don't mind you being registered gun owners. That's fine. And it was because of those incidents like with Gilbert Arenas and the woman Stephen Jackson when he was in a club and he was trying to basically protect himself. He he pulled he pulled out the jammy, raised it into the sky, and fired a few rounds off. And David Stern was basically saying, okay, we don't mind you being responsible gun owners, but leave the guns at home. And if we catch you with it, you're going to be severely punished. So, I, I, and 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 here we are. We have people say, "Well, all a Miranda's do is carrying a weapon. All he's doing is carrying a gun. What's the punishment? What's the crime? What's the crime? What's the crime? The crime is that is not behavior. A like you said, a multi-billion-dollar business a year, one who earns multiple billions of dollars in a year." That is not what they want their employees, their most high profile of employees, I may add, to one represent the, most, the league doing. One of the most highest profiles and, in the league. And he is probably one of the 10 highest profile players in the game today. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And people and, have the nerve to ask, why is the NBA or why is the Grizzlies punishing Morant? And it's probably unfair because – that infringes the, upon the Second Amendment rights he has. Get out of here with this mess. All that goes out the window when you sign that contract. Thank you. And that's exactly what I say. I'm like, Second Amendment is one thing. The contract you sign by the NBA is another. And you can own a gun all you want, but if you carry it in a way where the contract says that you aren't supposed to in public places, which I guarantee that is in his contract, guess what you're going to be doing? You're going to either suffer a whole lot of money being lost, or if you keep doing it, you will be exited out of the league. Ask Gilbert Arenas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now you have a bit of Gilbert Arenas going on the podcasting circuit, talking about he, he's this, he's that. No, you're just a dumb <laughs> that messed up your career. Yeah. Had a, a great career, one of the yes. best scorers. And. Again, want to want to prove that you gangster. Yeah, and, you proved it. Everybody didn't want it. Didn't everybody didn't want you to extend the proof. And then, and then the homeboy <laughs> that that was in the situation with Gilbert Arenas is now in jail for murder. Goodness gracious! So, like, 
is that where you want to end up at? Is Jai, is that where you want to be in jail? Is, is Do you think that's going to be cool? Do you think being locked up is, is fun? Or I, I'll, let you, I'll let you speak to some of, some of my brothers. They they guarantee you they didn't have no, they didn't enjoy the fact that you have someone telling you what to do 24 7. Nope. Because that's nope. what happens when you when you give up your freedom. Yeah, because your you life just, is not your own. Right? Yeah, when, when she decided to do stupid shit and, and and get arrested for stupid shit and like you lose all that, man. And is it worth it? Is it worth it for what to to brandish a gun on Instagram for the gram? Really? <laughs> no. Oh, for the yeah, gram? You want to flourish for the gram that way? Uh, no, thank you. Yeah, like don't don't don't, don't mean, like. You think about all this nonsense. You think about like why, 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 why are you throwing away such a wonderful career? You, you stand to make eight figures a year, my man. Dribbling a ball and scoring over twenty five points a game. It is not worth you doing that, jeopardizing that, by proving that you are a gangster, which you're not. I, no. Look, I, I, I look. I understand that here we are. You know, you, you're talking to men who one is in his upper forties, one just celebrated fifty. Mm-hmm. We both can tell you that when you're in your twenties, yes, you want to learn how you are in terms of being a man. You want to understand what is manhood, how does it look, what does it look like, how can I model it correctly. What are the things I need to do in in, in, in in preparation to be a more mature man the older I get? So I get that you're trying to understand you're, uh, you're trying to understand what does manhood look like to you. One of the ways it does not is being irresponsible and stupid. Yeah. And this is what you're doing. You are a brand now, man. And this is an irresponsible and stupid thing you're doing. And obviously, you haven't learned your lesson the first time. It's taking you another time to do it. And if you love playing basketball, you should know with the first incident that as as as, as quickly as you were able to get it, they, the NBA can take it away quicker. Yeah. And, and now you're about to learn that they're going to take it away quicker and for longer now. And it, and it, who knows? It might be a few months. It might be half the season. It might be a full year. It might be like what the NFL does with the fools who want to gamble, where uh, if some of them they get suspended for a year, and then you and then you have to go to the board of the NBA offices, and then in their case, the NFL offices, and plead your case to be reinstated into the league, basically saying, you know, man, I learned my lesson. You're right. It's wrong for me to do da 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 da. May I please? Have the privilege of playing, and I think that's what you have to understand. It's not a right for you to play on the feet on on the court. It's a privilege, my man. It is. And when you hold that weapon in your hand, you're basically saying that you no longer want to have the privilege of proving that you are one of the top ten basketball players in the world. Is that what you want? Because you're fast on the track and doing that. <laughs> That's Hunter. And now, thoughts from the throne. I just want to wish my mom a happy 84th birthday. Happy Mother's Day. Um, just just enjoy your family. Enjoy the precious times that you have with them this past weekend. Had a beautiful time with the wife and family away. We went to Atlantic City, had some quality time, and just and just enjoyed life. So just enjoy your the times you have with your family and with the ones you love. Embrace it. Um, enjoy your life, and um, yeah, just just be you, and and 
don't don't change for anyone. Change change if you choose to change. Just be yourself. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your family while they're here. And yeah, I'm I'm good to go. And yes, f- Boston. Peace. Oh my gosh, he had to say it again. Goodness. Everything Boston. <laughs> new kids on the block. <laughs> new edition. And I love new edition. I love new edition. Can't stand the rain. <laughs> new edition. <laughs> ben Affleck. <laughs> Matt Damon. <laughs> Big Poppy David Ortiz. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> Pedro Martinez. Um, the Bruins. <laughs> them. <laughs> the Celtics. Uh, Patriots somewhat. But Giants handled them. So, But still a big. <laughs> them. The Boston PD um, for that that the Boston Marathon, but I, I'm sorry, new edition. I do love you guys, but yeah, f- yeah. Except for Johnny <laughs> Gill, except for Johnny Gill. Yeah, Jenny. Johnny Gill is from DC, so not f- you, Johnny Gill, not you. The other f- five d- kids that from Bo- I'm sorry, they're not d- kids. They just they can't help where they come from. <laughs> but f- them for just for being from Boston. You know, we talk about men, and rightfully so. I mean, uh, we, contrary to popular belief, rule the world. And I'm not talking about in a cancerous way. I'm talking about in the way that moves the needle in life, meaning that we lead with love. And the reason why we do that is because we come from the loins of a woman. As uh, Sunday we celebrate Mother's Day, we can brag about us being as masculine as we possibly can be. We could talk tough about being a man and what it is to be one and being proud of being one. And you should be no question about that. You should be proud to be a man. You should love being a man. I know I do. I know why it does, but understand that our birth came from the loins of a woman. So when, when you celebrate mother's day from this point forth, Know that you do so with the understanding that you are big upping what started your manhood journey in the first place, your mother. So you can be proud of being the man you are, but definitely love the woman who started you on that journey. And with the woman that started me on my journey, Vion Carter Johnson, thank you for being a wonderful mother to me. You may not have been exactly the way I wanted you to be. And I'm here bristled with a lot of things that you've done. But I have to admit that you did a great job. And you're a wonderful woman. And I love you for it. Thank you. for Thank you for beginning me on my journey to being the man that I am today. And those are thoughts from the throne. That will do it for this episode of Mentality. For YSLFA, I am Cole Johnson. Uh, and we're concluding, as we always say in party, our secret technique is that we always speak with mentality. See you next week. Peace. That's coming.